This is the basic ratchet. Uh, the first drill that you will use uh, while doing your Gen X single piece implants, whether basal or compressive, even in fact for the two piece implant is this drill, DB2020. There is a laser marking here that tells you the name of the implant. Also there are different laser markings for the depth. There is a depth gauge on the kit so you can check what laser marking corresponds to which depth 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. For basal implants, you may need to make sure that the tip of this drill perforates into the opposing cortex. Okay, And when it is in the opposing cortex, you must check the reading at the gum level on the drill. If it is 18 or 20 or 14, that will be the length of your basal implant. So this is your first drill. After doing this drill, you can directly place your compression 3.0 implant. If you are going to place a basal implant, after this drill, you need to widen the perforation in the opposing cortex. So you need to go to your pilot drill. Okay, this is a traditional typical pilot drill, spiral drill. It is about 1.8 millimeters in diameter. And this drill also has to perforate into the opposing cortex, the tip over here. Only then your basal implant will go and engage into the opposing cortex. So this is the drill that we do for basal, uh, 3.5 and even 4.5 can be placed after doing this drill. In the maxilla, uh, it's much easier, the bone is a lot softer. In the mandible, if you are going to place implant diameters wider than 4.5, I recommend you get this drill. This is the second pilot drill. This is 2.8 millimeters in diameter. and for, for 5.5, 6.5 and above diameters, this tip of this drill needs to perforate the opposing cortex so that you can engage the basal implant into the opposing cortex. You don't need to use this drill in the maxilla. The only time you may need to use this drill in the maxilla is for example in a premolar extraction socket if you want to put a 6.5 basal implant. At that point, this drill is helpful to allow the insertion of the basal 6.5 implant in the maxilla. Uh, then this is the ratchet, this is the basic ratchet and this fits on top of the insertion tool okay and it has uh, a clockwise and an anti-clockwise action so you must see the word in. When you see the word in that is when when you turn it it will go clockwise and it will insert your implant. If you want to remove the implant or you want to unscrew the implant for whatever reason, you remove the ratchet, turn it around and when you see the word out, it will then work in the anti-clockwise direction and you will be able to remove the implant. As I said, I recommend always to use the torque ratchet. The torque ratchet has a feature that you can check the insertion torque of your implant and you can also protect it from excessive torque. So this is the handle over here. When you rotate this, if you keep an eye on this line, it will move. You can see now it's going up to 80. If I move it the anti-clockwise way, it will go lower down up to 40 and even up to 20. While inserting the implant, the minute you reach 20, you will have this clicking here. Okay, This part will disengage. So you know that you have reached 20. Ideally, we would like to set this insertion torque at at least 60, okay? Because most implants will be inserted by 40 or 50 newtons of torque. So when you are nearing 60 newtons, so when you are inserting, it will go up to 60. And then at 60, it will click. And finally, the last point that I recommend is that you insert it up to 80. You take the torque up to 80. And now when you are inserting the implant and it clicks at 80, you see it's a lot more difficult now, okay? I recommend at this point that you take out the ratchet, put it on the outside and take two turns out. So the implant will come out two turns, then you put it back on the inside and now you will find that the, that the implant will go in at least four turns. So you go out two times, then you put it on the inside and go one, two, three, four. That means this implant is now acting like an expander, it is expanding the bone as it goes in. Should you have a situation where after taking out two turns, 
when you put it on the inside and again when it goes in it only goes in two turns and again at 80 it clicks that means it's it's better in this case to remove this implant take the crestal drill if it's the compression implant okay and just do a little bit in the crest and when you reinsert your implant it will go a lot more easier but in most cases in my experience I always see that when I do in and out in and out after four or five times the entire implant is inserted.